By the end of this video, you'll understand this, a Hopf vibration. You may have heard mathematician Eric Weinstein comment on Joe Rogan, Hopf. And this is going to be H-O-P-F? H-O-P-F. Uh, you are looking at the most important object in the universe. What? Discovered by Heinz Hopf in 1931, Hopf fiber bundles pop up in at least eight different physics situations. So what you are seeing is, as legendary physicist Roger Penrose put it, an element of the architecture of our world. We'll build to an understanding of the Hopf vibration and the fewest steps necessary. If you're not yet familiar with higher dimensional shapes, you might want to first watch my video explaining a 4D hypercube known as the Tesseract, linked above and below. In my opinion, hypercubes are easier to understand than hyperspheres, and that video more gradually builds from the zeroth to the fourth dimension. So what's the simplest definition of a Hopf vibration? It's just a map from a hypersphere in 4D onto a sphere in 3D. How is it mapped? A sphere is fully covered by points. Each point is mapped to a circle from the hypersphere. The circles are the fibers that compose the hypersphere. We'll unpack this in a bit, but first we need to briefly cover the concept of stereographic projection, which is the process of mapping a sphere onto a plane. First, imagine a light source at the north pole of this circle in 2D. As this light beam passes through the circumference, you can see there is a projection of a purple point on the x-axis in 1D. Now here we have the light source at the north pole of this sphere in 3D. As the light passes through the boundary, you can see a circle is projected onto the 2D plane. Note how the circle is larger closer to the north pole. Next, we inflate a polyhedron with four colored faces. We project in all directions from a fixed point on the north pole. You can see how the faces on the sphere are projected onto the two-dimensional plane below. We are demonstrating how a circle or sphere appears in lower dimensions so we can build intuition of how a hypersphere projects into one lower dimension, the third dimension. The top row is the view of a circle or sphere in what you might call their traditional space. 2D for the circle and 3D for the sphere. The bottom row is how that is projected onto a lower dimensional plane. Before we explain the Hopf vibration, it's important to note I'm skimming over imaginary numbers, quaternions, and the complex plane to keep this as straightforward as possible. But if you wish to dive into the nitty gritty math, there are links in the description. In our first example, we are stereographically projecting from the north pole of a sphere. As we rotate around the circle, you can see how this one point corresponds to one circle. If we view this continuously, all of these circles fill up the hypersphere. Let's track just one point as it moves from north to south. We'll start at the equator. The red point on the sphere relates to the red circle within the hypersphere. The white torus or donut corresponds to connected points around an axis. As the point spins southward, you can see the circle getting smaller and tighter around the center until it's a non-skewed circle through the south pole. As the point moves north, the corresponding circle gets much larger until, when it goes to true north, it appears as a straight line. It's hard to imagine, but this is actually a circle through infinity. This is how the circles would appear around a single axis, say the equator. It's easier to see this interaction if we look at just two complex points and their complementary circles.
As you view them move around an axis, you can see how they are linked like a chain. A third linked circle joins the dance. And we can keep on adding circles to fit the entire hypersphere. Algebraic topology professor Niles Johnson at Ohio State University created this excellent visualization of the Hopf vibration with its corresponding points on a sphere. Some Hopf vibration facts. None of the circles intersect. Each circle links to every other circle exactly once. True South in 3D is a circle at the core of the Hopf vibration. Visualize this as the tightest circle in the center of the torus or donut. True North in 3D is that circle through infinity. Remember, this is the stereographic projection of the hypersphere in our familiar three dimensions. While this is running, two plugs. First, if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe to my channel. And second, I highly recommend a similar visualizer and interactive tool created by Nico Belmonte. It allows you to draw your own circles within the hop vibration and rotate the structure as well. This awesome learning tool is linked below in the description. And now we stereographically project these Villarso circles on a few latitudes on the sphere. As this runs, I need to recommend the excellent resource dimensions-math.org and the corresponding Joe Slay's YouTube channel. Jos and a team of brilliant minds created an amazing nine-part series on dimensions, which you should check out. Many of the visuals in this video come from that series, which they so graciously distributed under a Creative Commons license. Everything is linked below in the description. We then rotate around 4D space. I also want to share some still images of the Hopf vibration from another angle, which I think better illustrates the fiber bundledness of this structure. While we're here, why not take a ride inside a Hopf vibration? You can see all the circles, which look like lines, are made up of zero-dimensional points, which kind of look like spheres. As we mentioned earlier, the Hopf vibration is a fundamental element across a range of physics applications. Even if you'll never understand these advanced physics concepts, I hope you gained an intuitive understanding of an essential feature of our universe, the Hopf vibration. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.